This is insane. As a grandmaster, I'm ashamed to recommend this opening to you. I've always been thinking that it's just a dirty little trick that only works against beginners. But recently, I've checked the database and it blown my mind. Because this is a universal opening for black. And in most common lines, you win as black in 7 or 8 moves. Even against 2300, 2400, 2500 rated players. And it really does work. That is completely insane. One advantage of this opening is that it works against both major moves, both e4 and d4. Let's start with the move pawn e4, and in a moment I'll show you how you can get to the same position if your opponent chooses to play pawn d4. Now, in case of e4, we're going into the Alehain defense. And here the main variation is e5, knight d5, pawn d4, and the main move for black is pawn d6, which leads to a ton of theory. But instead, we're going to play a weird move, pawn b5. Now, why is this weird? Well, simply because white can just capture this pawn for nothing. Although, still this move may make some sense. I mean, by playing b5, we're stopping white from playing c4, which was white, white's intent. Also, it's uh, some sort of uh, fianchetto, you know, it's an advanced fianchetto. Therefore, there is a little bit of a reason for playing that. But of course, the main question is what if white simply takes it? Well, then, all of a sudden, you start this really unexpected counter attack by playing pawn c5. And so far, nothing really indicates that white is in danger. And, but you'll be surprised to know that in a lot of the main lines of this opening, you're gonna win this position in something like three moves. <laughs> Again, as I said earlier, this is completely insane. Saying. I cannot really fully comprehend why it's happening, but it does happen. All right, so there are a number of ways for white to lose this game real quick in a very spectacular fashion. Okay, one of them is playing pawn takes c5. You know, so far it looks like you're playing give up chess, you're playing dumb moves. I mean, you're giving up one pawn, now you're giving up the other pawn, and your opponent may think that you are just a bad player and may think, okay, uh, I'll take it. You know, white takes the, the pawn, white attacks the knight, what more can you ask for? The problem is, this is actually a losing mistake. Can you believe that? White has already lost, and it's queen a5 check, which puts white in trouble. This is a double attack to the king and bishop, and this is a very common tactical motif in different variations of this opening. You'll, you'll, you'll just see this in a moment. But, at this point, although your opponent probably missed the move queen a5, he or she will not worry too much, because they'll think, hey, okay, let's say I'm losing this bishop on b5, but at the same time I'm attacking this knight, right? So, no problem, let's trade. And your opponent covers their king somehow, let's say by playing pawn c3, you capture the bishop, white captures the knight, and white feels good. White is still two pawns up, attacks the rook, everything's cool. There is only one major drawback. After bishop b7, it's time for white to resign. <laughs> That's what white overlooked. Bishop b7 attacks the queen and also axe raise this pawn on g2 and more importantly white's rook in the corner which is trapped. And there is nothing white can do about that. So if the queen moves somewhere, let's say queen d4 is the most common move, now you just grab the pawn happily and on the next move there is nothing white can do to prevent you from capturing the rook in the corner. Uh, also, finally enough, at this point, the most common move overlooks one more threat. White usually goes here knight to a3, trying to counterattack, but that backfires because that allows you to play queen f1, another move missed by white. And now that is a complete disaster for white. You're now attacking the king, or on the next move you can grab the rook, you're gonna attack the knight, you can play knight c6, attack the queen, and then here it's just so overwhelmingly winning for black. Now let me show you how you can get to the very same position if white chooses to play pawn d4 on the next move instead of you know moving the e-pawn forward. So if white goes pawn d4, you once again play the same weird move pawn b5. Oh my god, I would never thought that I would recommend this to you. Uh, now, normally white would play pawn e4, I mean pawn c4 is impossible anyway, you'd capture this and pawn e4 definitely makes a lot of sense for white, it's the best move to play. Uh, white takes the center, you know, opens up this attack, but you still go knight f6 and you counterattack white's pawn on e4. So although white can take this pawn on b5, that would be just an exchange and you'd win white's central pawn. Well, not win, but that would be a favorable exchange for you, generally speaking. Therefore, definitely white will find, find it out that they can first play pawn e5, push your knight away, and after that, they can just win the pawn for nothing. And here, after you play pawn c5, that transposes into our variation. I think it's called Old Sullivan Gambit, and although my database says that it's known for almost 50 years, I'm absolutely sure that your opponents are familiar with it. Another common error for white here would be to play pawn c3. It's just such an automatic reaction, you know. You played pawn c5, attack this pawn, and white says, okay, I want to maintain my center, so they play pawn c3. 
makes a lot of sense generally speaking in lots of different openings that's how white typically play but right here after this exchange in the center of the board white once again misses the same tactics queen a5 and that wins the game just as well and this is the sixth move so again it's hard to comprehend how this weird opening can win games for black in just six seven or eight moves but that's what really going on in most of the major lines of this gambit let me also show you one more interesting variation and something really funny about this uh, whole gambit overall. So let's say white goes pawn e4 or pawn d4 doesn't really matter. If they go pawn e4, we respond with knight to f6, attacking this pawn. So the main move for white is pawn e5. We go knight d5. They usually go pawn d4 and we play our weird stuff pawn b5, old Sullivan gambit. Now white will certainly capture the pawn happily and now you play pawn c5. Here in the bottom right corner, you can see the statistics of most common moves. We have already analyzed that pawn takes c5, as you can see, is a very common error. By the way, if you go there and queen e5 just, just wins here in most cases, you can see that 2500 rated players and 2600 rated players were trapped that way. Rather, let's take it back. Uh, also, like the very common move is pawn c4. And in this case, we're going to take here on d4. We're not going to go back. We just want to keep keep attacking or counterattacking. Now, we're not worried about this potential exchange because if white chooses to take here, which is not the best move, uh, then we still go queen e5, our usual tactics. And because of this check, we're going to take the bishop back. After that, we start attacking all these pawns. And generally speaking, white's position is very shaky here. Black is doing absolutely fine. Therefore, in this case, it is better for white to take here queen d4. That's what they do. Now we go knight b4, threatening this nasty fork, knight to c2. So white needs to cover it. The most common move is knight e3. And now computer says that pawn a6 here is the best move for black, which leads to, I think, an about equal game, according to computer. But queen a5, as you can see, is a lot trickier because in the vast majority of the cases, your opponent is going to play the losing mistake bishop d2. And bishop d2, again, it's, it's really con is a really natural move because queen e5 sends this discover check, let's say, with knight to c2 on the next move. And white definitely wants to cover that diagonal. And if they go bishop d2, it looks like, you know, white is completely in control. But there is this queen a3 move which just wins. What's the trick here? Well, we eliminate the defender of this key square c2. And after pawn takes here a3, we go knight c2 check. And as a result of this, we are a piece up in this end game, and this should be completely winning for black. And what's really funny is that if I just, um, you know, go a couple moves back, and let's say I ask Stockfish to tell us its opinion about the position, Stockfish says that white is plus 1.8. And Stockfish clearly sees that white is a pawn up and says that white is better. But you see that in reality, out of 217 games in the database, in 201, white made a losing mistake, right? That loses the game right away. And the correct move, queen e4, suggested by Stockfish, was only played once. So again, I wouldn't just blindly rely on Stockfish evaluation. You know, Stockfish evaluation is good if your opponent is capable of playing perfect moves all the time. But this opening is so much full of traps and your opponent can really go wrong literally at every move that I think, practically speaking, you have great chances of using this, especially in Blitz. The main move that you gotta be prepared against is the move bishop to c4, which uh, moves this bishop away from danger and also counterattacks your knight. And definitely you gotta know what are you gonna do in this case. But before we get into this, let me make just one quick reminder that, you know, today's a weird day because I'm getting older and we're celebrating this. Uh, just a couple of days ago, that was my birthday. I'm turning 35. And uh, because of that, we're having special offers for a few days to celebrate this for our subscribers. And now is the last chance for you to take advantage of that 64% discount on all of my premium courses and packages. So if you're curious uh, and if you want to elevate your chance, you can click the link below the video, get to our shop and find a product that suits your needs and then follow a proven system to elevate your chest results. Once again, it's the last opportunity to do so. So if you're interested, it's better to check it out right now. All right, let's come back to the old Sullivan Gambit. After White just played Bishop to c4, we aren't going to chicken out. We still play our usual move, Pawn takes d4. We're not scared about White taking the knight over here because the same tactics saves us once again. Queen a5. Once again, double attack to the king and bishop. And generally speaking, this kind of an exchange is really cool for black. Because after bishop d2, let's say queen takes d5. Notice that white's center collapsed. We're attacking this pawn, attacking that pawn. 
the only way for white to defend it seems to be knight to f3 but after that there is one more problem you can play bishop a6 and cut white's king off so it can't castle anymore and generally speaking it's in danger if I'm not mistaken, the most common move of white here is the move pawn c3, and after queen e4, this is nearly a checkmate. And again, it's just nine, only nine moves have been played, and you are achieving a winning position. Now, in order to avoid an immediate checkmate, well, I'll have to sacrifice material, but they're lost anyway. Okay, it feels like this is the trappiest opening of all, because there is really a trap at every move. Now, we're analyzing the main line, bishop to c4, attacking the knight. We know that we are not going to defend, we just recapture over here. And after bishop takes d5 and queen to a5, check to the king, we know that just covering the king is not really an option for white. Queen takes d5, gives black an edge. Instead of that, there is a stronger move for white, and some of your more advanced level opponents may find it is to move knight to c3. White is willing to give up a piece because they know that they're gonna win the rook here in the corner of the board and right now they're up a piece anyway. Okay, what are you gonna do here? Well, here you are at the crossroad. Computer says that knight to c6 is the best move and it leads to a complicated position, but if you're willing to accept some risk, I'd say that d takes c3 is even more promising because although strictly speaking this is an incorrect move, but practically in most cases black win because finding the right continuation for white is really tricky. So what's the main line here? Uh, the main line here is that white's gonna capture over here or over here, and in both cases you are doing great. If white captures here, there is simply queen takes c3, check to the king, attack the rook, attack this pawn, attack all around, you are good. Now, if white takes instead over here on a8, which is the main line, that is the funniest line of all, because after pawn takes b2, not only you are taking the pawn, but that is a discover check, that's the trick. And after bishop to d2, we're playing queen takes e5, check to the king, and notice that on the next move we're gonna grab the rook. So if white covers somehow, b takes a1, not only wins the rook, but gives you a whole new queen, and now you're having just an overwhelming material advantage, and you definitely win. This is a very funny line where um, somehow you manage to get away with two queens at the end, and you win. The only downside of this trick is that your opponent actually has a winning move, but it's difficult to find it. It's the move pawn b4, which you know, eliminates this potential discover check idea, and now white is, has this double attack against your queen and rook, so here white wins. But anyway, I've asked my cat what he thinks about this and whether, you know, this is an acceptable risk, and he told me that it doesn't bother him really, so I think you, you may accept this risk as well. This opening really reminds me of another opening which is full of traps where there is a trap of every turn. One of my favorite openings, the Russo Gambit. If you haven't watched my video about this, you may definitely click over there and check this out. And finally, let me remind you once again that it's the final opportunity to take advantage of the celebration of my birthday and get my advanced premium courses at a 64% discount. So if you're interested, click the link below the video and grab them right now at the final opportunity. Wish you all the best. Keep crushing it. Take care.